how far? How far back do I see? Uh, as far back as you need to. I'm not used to using this sort of equipment. <laughs> Seems like it. Can you hear me now? Yes. Ooh. I like that. I sound bigger. <laughs> <coughs> Alright, I am going to read a section out of my story first to try and loosen up my vocal cords. <clears throat> I am reading from chapter 6, about halfway through. Ah, yes, of course, thank you. The book is called Jonah and the Clockwork Goblin. Jonah turned the handle to the next carriage and slid it open. At the front of the steamer, he could hear people barking orders and water splashing. He slid open the door to the first class cabin and stepped in. Unlike the other carriages, this one had a lit hallway with light provided by glowing stones that had been set in small chandeliers above each door. It was at this point that Jonah realised he didn't know which room the magpie goblin was sleeping in. He stepped up to the first door and listened. Inside he could hear several Sitnoltons talking about some sort of game they were playing. The next door had the sound of snoring, and occasionally punctuated by whip barking and whimpering. Dogs, Jonah thought. Wait, do they even have dogs here? The beings in that room suddenly hissed and thrashed around. Jonah heard wood splintering. Fancy a fool today, it's not Best not 99 to... 99-year-old sea the sporting down by Woodville Station, near the bookshop. Full of the sex right. The dogs are three dollars, children are three. Thank you for that announcement. <laughs> <clears throat> the next door was quiet except for a strange clicking filthy little human a familiar voice muttered if it wasn't for him Grovel wouldn't have broken his eye and his lovely beetle Grovel will need weeks to fix beetle might have fixed his clockwork eye the room went silent for a moment no curses and swears Grovel needs help nasty sit no don't help Call Grovel groaned Hit him. Master will help Grovel. <clears throat> Sorry. Mistress will help Grovel. Mistress is nice. Only threatens Grovel when Grovel bad. Jonah twisted the handle and entered the room. It was larger than the room that Jonah had been sharing with her Ponai and Gregor. It had a double bed, lighting, and a small gas heater. Over on the opposite wall from the bed was a desk with a small stool. Sitting cross-legged and naked on the stool was Grovel. He had his back to Jonah, and Jonah got his first look at the magpie goblin. He was small and bony, attached by bolts to his shoulder blades and spine was a long rectangular box from, a, from which a metal arm extended. Leading up to the base of the magpie's skull was a series of wires and tubes that disappeared under the skin at the back of his head. Set in a claw-shaped setting was a small piece of opal. Grovel had long knife-shaped ears and a light dusting of fur in random patches of black and white. At the base of his spine was a long, thin tail that twitched while he worked. Which is about, I think it's one of only two scenes in which the two title characters are even in the same room. So, that is my book, and I am not obligated to tell you that it is on sale up the road by uh, Stone Table Books, completely not obligated by contract to say that. <laughs> I must admit that talking about how to be a steampunk author is a little difficult for me since I didn't realise steampunk was a thing for quite some time. Uh, my favourite authors have always been from the era that steampunk has been set. Um, so H.G. Wells, Jules Verne, people like that. I thought that was the sort of thing that everybody liked because as you can see there are lots of people here who like that same thing. So when I wrote this book and sent it to Stone Table and got it published, I thought, cool, I have a book published. I didn't even realise it had a set genre to, to slip into, which I thought was pretty cool. 
becoming an accidental steampunk author. <laughs> um, I have a passion for oddities. The title Goblin character has actually been rattling around in my skull since about the age of 14. Uh, finding a story for him was difficult until I plucked out his eyeball and started welding extra bits onto him here and there. Um, the addition of uh, steam came significantly uh, later when I realised that if I was going to set the story in an 1800s style mining town, steam trains and things of that nature were effectively inevitable. Um, Actually, most of the characters in this story have been bothering me in some way or another for a number of years. The dryad in it was from the same story as the original Goblin called The Long Dark Tunnel to Nowhere, which was boring, horribly boring, which is why I decided to rip them out and uh, doubt them for this. Um, Writing for me, I guess, is a little bit of a team sport. Uh, I know a lot of people write on their own, but I have about five to ten people on a good day uh, backing me up. So I don't know if that is going to work for some of you as authors, but definitely if you feel like you need a support crew, you probably do, even if it's just somebody to bring you tea at four in the morning while you're busy writing away when you should be asleep. Um, does anybody have any questions? I, what does the support crew actually do? Ah, uh, no, I have an army of editors because I suck at things like grammar, but I'm great with stories and spelling. Um, I have my wife, who is my initial editor and proofreader. Um, there are the lovely people at Stone Table Books who are paid to try and turn my story into something which other people could read. Um, my family are insanely um, knitted into my writing process from my sister who I will send stories to her who will look at them and either say it's crap or keep writing, which is actually fantastic feedback. I think I get a lot more out of the, it's crap, you should stop feedback. <laughs> well, that's not usually you should stop, it's try something different. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> it is a trope full of tropes, but I'm allowed to get away with it because it's a first novel. I, nobody expects me to be any good yet. Any other questions? Go. Where did you get the inspiration for Jonah's brother? Jonah's, uh, okay, that, that is actually interesting. Jonah's older brother, who is in the story for probably the first two and a half chapters, was an amalgamation of how I see myself as an older brother, um, a guy who I often refer to as my adopted brother, but who's really my best friend, his name is Trevor, and my, oddly enough, my little brother. He is meant to be sort of an intrinsically, well, I guess he is just there to be a brother. He is meant to personify brotherhood. Jonah is also an amalgamation of the same three people. But if you take all the best traits, uh, out of the three people, you will get Jonah's brother, and if you take all the worst traits, you will get Jonah. And that was kind of how the story was meant to be set up. You start off with a character who is unlikable for about the first half of the book, uh, who really wants to be his older brother and has to work so hard to even come remotely close. Most of the characters are amalgamations of people. The cranky old lady in the story is a combination of my grandmother, well, both my grandmothers, my mother and my wife. <laughs> um, the dryad is an amalgamation of my sister, my sister-in-law, my wife, 
and my mother. Um, Gregor is definitely uh, my father mixed with half my lecturers at Tabor. <laughs> definitely the cheeky uh, sense of humor uh, comes from my father. But um, people always say you should write what you know. I like to write who I know. I don't think I have a single character in anything I've written who doesn't have traits that have been, you know, ripped out of um, of people I know. Um, from Eponai's incredibly, what do you call it, practical way that she names her goats after their usefulness and their eventual uh, fate. The goat's name is actually Rogan Josh, which is a curry. Yeah. And he is the 25th goat in that line of curry goats, which is a practical trait that my grandmother has, which I've always found incredibly endearing. Um, yeah. who, who makes up uh, Jonah? I thought I answered that before. Sorry, I missed that. Ah, uh, I'm busy working. Myself, my brother, and my best friend. All of our worst traits are Jonah. So, which actor do you see playing Jonah when this is made into a movie? Oh, good lord. <laughs> Actually, most of the actors who I think would play him, him well be, will be way, way, way too old. Um, if we could get Justin Bieber relatively likeable, I think he'd make a good Jonah. <laughs> Particularly if he lets people hit him in the face a bit. I think most people could get behind that. Um, Gregor is bear shaped. He would definitely need to be CG, but I see someone like either Sean Connery or Morgan Freeman uh, doing the voice work for that character. Actually, that's, that's kind of who I had in my head while I wrote that character. I either write people, I write my characters to either pieces okay. of music or based on actors or people I know, so, you know. The, the villainous is based entirely on uh, one piece of music by a band called um, Blackmore's Night. Uh, they did a song about an ancient legend of a siren called, uh, ironically, Lorelei. And I liked it so much that I turned her into the main villain. So, yeah. Any other questions? So having read myself, mm. uh, I'll get to you in a second. Blind and pure luck when it comes to success. <laughs> uh, the reason why I, well, I wrote my story as the novel component to my masters in creative writing. My supervisor for that masters got himself a job at a publishing house and contacted me. Uh, I found out that this was after my wife had sent my book to half a dozen publishers who'd knocked it back. But in my case, blind and pure luck is in knowing the right people is the reason why the book got published. That and the occasional boot in the backside from my wife when the editing process slowed down. You were asking questions. So, uh, I got questions of coming of age uh, story. Definitely a coming of age. As I said, Jonah is completely unlikable in the beginning. Uh, does a lot of whining and gets hit, hit in the face a lot before he sort of shapes up. Um, he is meant to be, ev his older brother is everything he wants to be and won't because he has no idea how to achieve that goal of being as charismatic, likeable, and I guess having an integrity that uh, his brother has. So it takes the entire book, a trip to the underworld and meetings with several creatures who want to eat him to shake him out of that, uh, that sort of uh, whiny, childlike attitude that uh, I disliked in myself so much when I was in high school. Are there any other questions? 
terms of hours? Roughly how many hours would you have put into this book? I think I worked it out. Uh, at, if I was writing about eight hours a day, two and a half years of work. I started writing this about five years ago and just purely working on a sort of nine to five, eight hour shift. This book would have taken me two and a half years of um, writing and that's just the writing. Um, the research that I had to go into, um, the excess writing i mean i had to put a glossary in the back because there was so much that i remembered from my world building and writing phase that i had to sort of try and explain in the back i wrote a 2000 word essay for myself um on how magic works just so i could try and keep it consistent um so yeah two i'm um, yeah two and a half years just on the writing Three, if you add in reading, research, arguing with my proofreaders, arguing with my editors, and um, actual rewriting when the publisher got it back. Two and a half? Three? Let's play it safe and call it three years of eight hour shifts. I worked this out last week and I cannot for the life of me remember what I worked it out to, but that sounds right. I'll just say it's right. So <laughs> mm. No. <laughs> if I was to write another book in this world, which I've been asked about but wasn't my intention, I think there are enough people left alive that I could cobble together a sequel, but it's not on the cards at the moment. That would be a lot easier, but since I'm planning to write stories in other worlds, I'm not anticipating it to be any easier than it was initially. So your next book's about two and a half years Roughly. Have I gone over time? Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. <laughs>